Hi, everybody. This is a sermon review from John chapter 15, verses 18 to 27. I taught this on September the 6th, 2015. In John chapter 13 and 14, Jesus speaks to his disciples a lot about love. Uh, it's the Last Supper. He washes their feet. He announces uh, the betrayal. And throughout chapter 14 and 15, he encourages them and commands them to continue to love one another. But then we hit this spot in chapter 15 where he just kind of turns the coin over, if you will. He says, though you are loving one another and though you're called to love the world, don't be surprised if the world hates you. Now, the word hate is a strong word in English. In the Greek language and in the in biblical text, it also means to, to love less, to detest, to have bad feelings for, to be in opposition to. So it's a, a wide range of emotion and sentiment and thought. So basically, Jesus is saying, listen, as you love people, don't be surprised if they are against you or if they resist you or if they resist the message of the gospel or if they you know, show indifference or if they flat out hate you. Any range of uh, negative emotion and opposition uh, you may run into could be kind of found under that word hate. Now, Jesus said uh, the world is going to have some opposition against his followers. Let me start off by saying this. There are some followers of Jesus that are opposed uh, against and kind of rejected simply because they're not very godly people. Jesus, uh, we are told in John chapter 1, was full of grace and truth. So if you're a follower of Jesus, make it your aim to be full of grace and truth. Be gracious to people and tell the truth. And unfortunately, a lot of believers uh, are not full of grace or they don't tell the truth. Uh, therefore, they um, feel that opposition and they feel persecuted for righteousness sake. Really, they're being opposed for unrighteousness. So don't let yourself fall into that category. Jesus went on to say, conversely, that there is going to be some opposition. If they hated him, if they rejected him, if they were against him, uh, and we, if we carry his message and if he dwells within us, they're going to be against us. There's going to be some opposition, at least at the very least, non-acceptance at the most, as we see in different places in the world, um, you know, physical assaults and even death against Christians. So wide range of things that the Christian should be uh, not, not surprised that they're going to be uh, you know, experiencing. Jesus said in verse 19 of John chapter 15, you are not of this world. So our citizenship is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. Our, our heart is in heaven. Um, every Christian, we battle through the, the things of life, through the flesh, through temptation to sin and all that, but we are citizens of another kingdom. And so the world recognizes that we are not part of this uh, system that we live in, and there's some opposition there. Jesus said, remember a word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept your word, they will, if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. So if Jesus was persecuted, if Jesus was opposed, we shouldn't be surprised that it happens to us. Conversely, he said, there is some good news. Some of them are going to listen to you. Some of them will keep your word. Some of them will keep the word of Jesus. And so uh, we want to continue to go out and share the love of Jesus Christ and share the word of the Bible. So what is the mind and the heart of those who um, are opposed to the gospel message? Jesus tells us all these things they will say to you, all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no excuse. But now they have no excuse for their sin. So Jesus said, listen, you know, I came, I brought God to this earth. God, Jesus was God in the flesh. He manifested the love of God. He manifested the power and the wisdom of God, the holiness of God. The people saw and heard and watched uh, God in action. And so there was a high level of responsibility that they had in regards to responding to that light, to that truth. In his generation, Jesus said, these people are, are without excuse. Now, what about in our generation? How does God manifest himself to the world? He does it through nature. Creation points to a creator. Secondly, uh, he does it through the conscience and, and the moral code written on every single human heart. Uh, why do we say something's right and something's wrong? There's a morality that's written on our hearts. We are moral creatures, and that morality will either excuse us or accuse us, according to Romans chapter 2. Thirdly, how does the world uh, get exposed to Jesus Christ? Well, he, they get exposed to Jesus Christ through his followers, through Christians, as we speak the word of God, as we love them with the love of God. And so God continues to manifest himself to the world 
But Jesus says simply that people are without excuse. They're, they're rejecting the light of God. And it says in John chapter 3, because they choose darkness over light because their deeds are evil. And so that's the rub. That's the, that's the cause of the tension. We live in two different world systems and two different value systems and two different spiritual kingdoms. The Bible says the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Uh, that sounds extreme probably to some people that are listening to this message, and yet the Bible says that it's true. And when pushed hard enough or when the situation kind of extends itself harshly enough on a person's life, you see really what they're made of. And so that's what the Bible declares. These people refuse the presence of God. Uh, it says in verse 25, But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. And so Jesus says the Old Testament and the Psalms predicted that there would be hatred, opposition, ill will, no esteem towards Jesus. And this is crazy, but that there would be no good reason for that. I've often wondered if, if I could sit down and have coffee uh, with a friend who didn't want to follow God and with Jesus there. Could they honestly point a finger at Jesus' face and say, these are the reasons that I'm against you? I think that's a really heavy thought. Could you actually sit down, look at Jesus in the face, and give valid reasons why he's not worthy of your uh, love and your dedication? That's just an intense thought to think about. And so the people that were rejecting the disciples, the people that are opposed to the followers of Jesus today, there's no good reason for it. There's lots of bad reasons. Some, sometimes people blame the church, and we shouldn't defend the church. There's been problems with the church. The church makes mistakes. There's people in the church that are under construction and sin and wheat and tares dwelling side by side together. But you just can't point a finger at Jesus and say, this is why I reject you and, and have a good reason for that. That's what the Bible says. Finally, he tells the disciples, when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So big picture. Take it all in. Last Supper, he's speaking about love, love, love one another. This is how the world's going to know you're my disciples. But don't be surprised if they oppose you. Some of them will even hate you. We know that most of the uh, disciples went on to be uh, martyrs. They died martyrs' deaths. That could be very discouraging to the Christian. But he says, but listen, the Holy Spirit's coming, the third person of the triune Godhead. He's going to indwell you. And he's going to go on in John chapter 16 to say he will be that one that will testify of me. And so the, the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to point people to Jesus. And if he's in us, that's going to be coming out of our lives, uh, even in the face of opposition. And so he encourages the disciples at the end there. He says, look, at it, it, it's going to be tough in different ways, but the Spirit of God will be with you. So don't be surprised when the opposition comes. Be merciful to those who don't know me and let the Spirit of God speak of me. So thanks for watching. God bless.